During this video, I'm going to show you how to look for tasks with empty fields, like an empty due date or an empty assigned to. I'm going to use the workflow conductor to do that. Um, as you can see, I have a SharePoint 2013 farm here. This is an on-premises farm. Um, I'm on a team site that I call Team B, and Team B has a tasks list. When I go to that tasks list and click new task, you see the out of the box task form in SharePoint has um, an asterisk next to task name, which means that's a required field. Uh, but nothing else is required, due date assigned to not required. So it's very easy to create a task with empty values in those two fields. But a task without a due date or a task without somebody assigned to it is sometimes a problem. So we're going to create a workflow that checks for that. So uh, from my tasks list, I'm going to go to the list ribbon and I'm going to open up the workflow conductor studio. Um, to build this workflow, the first thing that you might do is go under workflow logic and look down these list of widgets and uh, the first one you'll come to is compare and you might think that's a good one to use for this particular workflow. I'll drop that on my workflow and double click on it. Over here I'm going to click on the dot 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 to configure this compare. Um, it's comparing two values so that's good. I'm going to choose to compare due date. And uh, you'll notice that when I do that, um, I have a couple of options here, but I don't see is empty or is not empty. So using this comparison, it's going to be kind of hard for me to look for empty values. Sometimes you can look for things equal to a space and things like that, um, but that's not usually um, a good thing to do. I could also, let's check on assign to. If I look at assign to, um, that also doesn't have the empty options. So I'm going to close that and cancel and delete the compare. It's not the best widget to use in this scenario. Instead I'm going to go a little bit further down the list and use conditional branch. I'm going to double click on conditional branch and open up the condition for that. It's very similar to compare. Um, but here I'm going to choose uh, the due date field again. And the operators, if you notice, I have several additional options available to me with this widget. So I'm going to look for due date is empty. And uh, with this widget, I can also add another condition, which is nice. So I'm going to add um, a check for assigned to also. And here, assigned to, look, I also have those several options available to me. So I'm going to look for assigned to is empty. And then back in the middle these two conditions are by default joined with an AND operator, but I don't want to look for instances when they're both empty. I want to look for instances where either is empty, so I'm going to change that to OR. Click ADD. I'm going to change the display name to be a little bit more descriptive. So check for empty values, and then I'm going to click SAVE. Okay, so next, um, in this scenario, what I want to do is uh, let the person who created or modified this task know. Let them know that uh, they forgot to fill in due date or assign to. So I'm going to use the send email widget on the true branch. Double click send email. Uh, so again, I'm going to send it to the person who last modified this task, which when it's first created, that will be the person who created it also. Um, for the subject, I'm going to say um, the task called, and I'm going to put the task name in here, has an empty due date or assigned to field. And then in the body, I'm going to um, repeat the task name, just give the person uh, a little bit more information about uh, this task. 
to go to. Okay, so I want to put a URL in here so that they can easily go into SharePoint once they get that email. So I'm going to use an easy reference. I also want them to, I want to repeat the task name. I know it was in the subject, but it's also nice to put it in the body of the email also. Uh, the assign to. So this way they'll know which, which thing was empty. Um, and then the due date. So there's the body of my message. I'm going to save my email message. And I'm going to go up to settings and give my workflow a name. I'm going to uh, start it automatically when an item, a task is created or changed. Click save. And now I'm going to publish it to my list. It's asking me to save it, so I'll save it first before publishing. And there, it's published successfully. So I'm going to click OK. Close the Workflow Conductor Studio. Now let's test it out. I'm going to create a new task. Call it XYZ task. Uh, we'll add a due date, but we'll leave the assigned to empty. And there you can see um, there's a column that shows up automatically. That's my workflow name, and it's showing me the status of that workflow. This workflow should probably run pretty quickly, so if I refresh the page, we see that it's completed. If I wanted to look at the workflow history, I can click on that word completed, and you'll see that it did find something empty because it sent an email. So let's go look for that email. There it is. Um, came to me because I was the one who created that task. Uh, there's the name. The assigned to is blank. Due date has a value. So there I can see exactly uh, what's going on. And if I need to go into SharePoint to update that task, there's a link for me to do it. So that's a quick workflow uh, that you can use to quickly and easily find if certain columns in certain lists are empty.